Take a look at this great workflow from Actor Core to iClone to Cartoon Animator. We'll start off by grabbing some great motions from Actor Core. We'll apply the motions to a dummy character in iClone and then link our 2D character in Cartoon Animator and apply the motion through to the character in Cartoon Animator. Hi, I'm Warwick Hayes. So I'm a featured content developer for Reillusion. Over the last few years of creating content for Reillusion, I've been getting some great results. But now we can get even better results with Actor Core, iClone, and Cartoon Animator. I made a short clip with a new character series that I'm about to bring out. These are just three of the nine characters. I've been really happy with the content I've been able to create with Cartoon Animator. But now, using Actor Core, iClone, and Cartoon Animator, we can put together some really cool animation and pretty quickly too. I'll run through how I put some of these short sequences together and you'll see just how easy it is. So these are just three of the nine characters of my new series, The Family. It'd be great if you could take a moment and have a look at them on the marketplace. You never know, they might just be what you need for your next project. First of all, I go through and find some of the motions that I like and want to use in Actor Core. I'll buy those and then go into iClone and install them. Here's this first one with the jump. First of all, I'll open up the motion link that ties iClone across to Cartoon Animator. Add a dummy character. We click the activate link. Select our dummy and add a motion to it. We go through and just add motions the same as we do with Cartoon Animator. Just top and tailing them and blending the link between. So for this second motion that we want to use, the character is actually jumping down from something. So in order to align the second motion with the first one, we just have to right click the second motion and align to root of the character. And this will bring it down in line with the feet. Don't worry about the pile of bones at the end, we don't need that part of the motion. Then once the motions are applied, I just need to work out the right angle for the character so it's moving in the direction that I want it to. And I'll just go through and scrub a few times, make sure that the motion is exactly what I want. Now we go into Cartoon Animator and open up the Motion Live 2D and the Link iClone. So we link the body motion and the hands. And then back in iClone we turn Send to Cartoon Animator on in Preview Mode. And we're able to see the character rotate from iClone through to Cartoon Animator. The camera tracks along and we get our motion. Then we change it from preview to record and just record that motion across into Cartoon Animator, applying it to our character. And there we have it, the base motion. Don't worry about the direction that the head's facing or the hands or, or the tiny little details. We'll fix those up in Cartoon Animator, it's much easier. Here's the next one. Old man jumping a fence. We go through the same process. Find the motion we want to apply and apply it to the dummy character in iClone. And then we have our link across into Cartoon Animator.
from here we play with the Z depth so that's the distance the character will run back into the scene the easiest thing I've found is just to go to extremes to see what it's going to look like and how far into the scene sometimes it's easier to add other props in the scene so you can see how it moves in relation to them so I record that across And then we can see that slight change in size as he jumps through and moves back into the distance. Again, not worrying about his head direction or the hands and, and little bits and pieces like that. We'll fix that up later. So we go through and delete the keys that were brought across from my clone on that head and then put our own ones in along with changing the hand directions because we've got the bone hands very quick and very easy and now we're just fine tuning For some reason the moustache moves on this one the further we go left and right so I just had to do a slight alignment there The eyes, got the right eyes in there and we just use the face key editor to move the direction of the pupils. And a slight change of the, the foot angle, just so he's not quite so square on. And there you have it. We've got all of the keys that we've adjusted in Cartoon Animator just to tidy him up and make him look a little bit more alive. Give him a little wink as he jumps over the fence. Here's the next one. Jumping up and jumping off the pile of palettes. So again going through the same process applying each of the motions lining them up and the great thing with all of these 3D motions in iClone especially for us cartoon animator users is that blending them is very much the same as in cartoon animator. You top and tail your motions and then you can drag out that extra little slider just to blend between the two and there's a lot of the editing features that you can use in iClone with those 3D motions you can use those to edit your clips before you import them across into Cartoon Animator. Opening up the Motion Live 2D in Cartoon Animator and linking the character from iClone so that we can get those motions we've just applied an iClone across to our character in Cartoon Animator. and then scrubbing through to see. So you'll notice a slight difference with the final version of this. I took that little jump out at the start, but it's still the same process. And adjusting your character with this angle slider is just a lot of trial and error. It depends on the angle that the character's been drawn at. But if you tweak it and flip and move it back and forwards, you'll find the, the angle that looks right. It took a little bit for me to get used to the fact that the character is looking at you the whole time while he's running but it's more just trying to look at that overall motion that the body itself is moving where you want it to and how you want it to. So here I just added on a bit more length at the end so that he could run off screen.
and here we go. So he's jumping up out of frame here, so I'll just resize him and push him back into the scene a little bit so that he goes where I need him to. Here's the next one, using Z, Z depth for the motion running towards the camera. So again, same process. It's very easy once you get going. You've just got to remember to select your character in Cartoon Animator so it knows what it's linking to. And with the Motion Live 2D panel, we switch over to the body and change the Z depth. When you preview from iClone to Cartoon Animator using Z depth, it's a little hard to gauge how the camera's moving because it tracks on the character. So the easiest thing to do is actually just to record it out onto the character and if it's moving where you need it to, then you can just use it. Otherwise, delete that motion clip and adjust your parameters. So here I need him to run a bit further. If you just add two clips on, you'll find that you can't just drag the clip out like we do in Cartoon Animator. And we get the same problem there as well, where the motion will jump back to its start point. So all you've got to do is copy and paste the clip Make sure that they're aligned up at the end. Right click, go to align to root, same as we did with the clip where we were adjusting the, the height. And then when you scrub through the animation, you'll find that he just continues on running instead of jumping back to that start point. Now that we've saved this across, it's just a matter of tweaking the end point where he runs into the camera and how far up his hands come. Because for these front-on characters, I've set their arms behind their torso and the hands are in front. So you do get that disjoint a little bit if the hand goes too far across the body. I just like the look of it with the shoulders behind the torso. But it's an easy fix of just moving a couple of the keys as you need them. And he's running so fast that you don't notice too much. Just the hands and we're done. And there you have it. The whole process is quite simple once you get into it. And with the number of motions that you can get from actor core, the possibilities are endless and so easy to do. So once you get yourself a good set of characters, especially ones that have uh, different angles, with these 3D motions you can pretty much move your characters anywhere you want around the scene. If you get a moment, it would be great if you could take a look at these new characters of mine. These are just three of nine that make up the family. They work great with these 3D motions, and I'd love to see what you can do with them. I hope you got something out of this tutorial, and happy animating!